Hello YouTube fans, here it again, after a new look, what goes with this? Um, I'm going to talk about the anime film, I remember talking about it before, but this is the, the real life and I'm going to talk about the original film, the 79 one, and I'm also going to talk about the sequel, it's going to be 80s on a marathon. And as we all know, the anime film was based on a true story of what was considered to be the most worst is on it house in America at the time. And there was a family called, if I remember right, the, the Mitaris, I can have the name right, it was an Italian fan there, right? The father, I think, had mafia influences and so on, right? And this was before the Lutz family moved in. So there was the Mitaris, I can have the name right, very hard name to be now. And I do believe that the father was very abusive leading to his kids and also spoiled his kids so it was a very abusive family it was a different era and it was a different time you know what i mean it was like you know 1974 when this happened right we all know the story of the anna film and you know he abused his kids he had the oldest son he had a little boy a longer sister one was about the same age as the older lad right and we all know the story of the Anna Phil. Because he was abused, I'm not making it up, but it turned out that the older lad was hooked on drugs. Whether that's true or not, it's a different story, but he was hooked on drugs. And on we all know in the night of 1974, it was thunder, it was lightning, it was stormy, and he got a shot done, murdered his mum, murdered his dad, murdered his little sister, murdered the little boy, his lung and brother, murdered his other sister, basically just murdered his family. And to avoid getting the leptic tear, he avoid insanity. And he always said that the house, the house told him to do it. But it's one of these, was it an haunted, was the house haunted, was it not? So the Michaela found there, we all know the lad murdered all his family in 1974. And he's still doing life today on the insane list. One year after, we had the Luxus. They moved into the same house. And they claimed that the house was haunted. True story. It was haunted. And, um, you know, the centrepiece depressed the house. There was rumours at the time that he got a slap in the face. There was nothing there. And the beast heard a voice telling him to get out. They had fires all over the window, fires on the wall, fires everywhere. At funny times, but it weren't even a hot day. And they had all this stuff going on. They had the little boy who was pranking and riding his sister up in window for no reason, just slammed on his hand. And they had all this stained stuff going on. They had slime coming down the wall. Not like not like thinking Ghostbusters, but honestly, it had slime coming out the wall. And the looks is never ever mentioned by the left, but on that night it was so frightening, so terrifying that they left. They left the house in 1976 and the nonsense said that the house was haunted. They uh, written a book in autumn in 1976, became a bestseller. 1979, they decided to make a movie of the other film, of the big gold, the other film of horror. Made a lot of sequels and then in 2005 they did a remake. I remember if you were in the remake, I didn't mind it. Is it as good as the original? No, it's just one of your typical CGR dump stairs. You've seen them once, you've seen them all. I wouldn't hate it, but to me, it's generic. Took away the Anifil horror, cut away the remake. It's just a typical generic dump stair boo. It's all story. You've seen done a million times. But well, I didn't mind the Anna film, you know what I mean? But I also like the 79 one, but it's one of these. Is it a two-story? Is it a two-story? The only real thing what was two was the Matara fan there, right? I want a fire on the wall. I want one of them fires, fire on the wall, watching whether the father was abusive or not. But it was mentioned in a lot of stories that he was abusive, he laid in. I never knew if he the kids, but I know he wanted his wife in front of the kids. And the older lads, as we all know, being insanity. To cut away getting the electric tear. When we all know it's a two story, he killed his fan there. And it always got me this. Always got me because it's thunder and lightning, right? What people are going to be faster feet with thunder and lightning? And there's a difference between a shot done and lightning. I saw a right, and she's coming from the fucking art. If somebody fired a fucking shot done 
in a house at midnight, even if it's thunder and lightning, I draw the difference between a shot done and not. Unless that family was in a fucking coma, how the fuck could they be feeping through a shot done and lightning? It's always got me that. Was there more into it than him killing all of his family? Was there somebody else there helping him? No, he killed them all executional style when it was all supposed to be a freep when he shot them. But it's one of them, you know what I mean? I want a fire on the wall. And in all fairness, in all fairness, um, there were so many different ways that they just started this house of being ordered. Now, originally it was mentioned that the Anifal house was built on an injured and burial ground. Then another story was there was a guy who was a devil worker, so did sacrifices there. And another rumour was it used to be a mental asylum for the generally insane. So it's one of these, every story changes, and every time I read the book, when the book come out well before the film, the remake, the sequels, whatever, there were so many different ways that the book was altered that many fucking times, you start your fucking head and think, which is two, which is fiction. The fires on the wall, I, I can explain that, and I remember explaining it before. If someone's been killed, I mean shot, institutional style, no matter how much you write the brain cells of a window, of a wall, all the blood stains, they're still going to be there. And then if even what's dead, even if it's not a hot day, fires are going to be landing on it like I don't know what. Anything what's dead, we all know, fires go on. So that answers the bit with the fires in the room. And you know what I mean? There's so many different ways it's been mentioned. So it's one of them, unless there was a fire on the wall. But it's one of these, it's one of these. It makes a good entertaining book and it makes a good entertaining movie. Like I say, they made the Anna in 1979 and they made a few sequels and as we all know, they did the remake. So I'm getting more into the two story, but the next time I talk about this, I'll be talking more about the movie. As we all know, the, the movie is inspired by a true story. It's based on a true event. But it's one of these. Which one is true and which one is fantasy land? Because the real family, which was the um, Luxes, said that they left. And they never, ever told the story of why they left on that night. It was too frightening. They never, ever admitted it. Never, ever admitted it. So the bit in the original 1979, the Anna of Horror, where the mum, the dad... Made by Dave Bolden, made by Matic Ticker, may she rest. The bit where they're sliding down the stairs, we all remember it, and the blood coming down the stairs was fancy death. Same as in the remake, where they all sail off in the fucking boat. Fancy death, meaning nobody knew the, how, it, how they really left and why they left on that current night. And as we all know, the muffler of the house, the Annaville, is no longer with us, he sadly passed away. And the father, I believe, is no longer with us as well. I think the son is still alive and so on. And he told the story. He actually said that the father was fucking around with a Ouija board. And that may have what tossed it. So again, it's two, so many different versions. It's like, which really happened and which is fantasy land. But, you know, it, like I say, it makes a good story. And to me, the only two story, I believe, is... The Motara family, that the lad, I think, could have been ice tight, hooked on drugs, and butchered his family. And we all know that's a true story. In 1974, he was arrested. But as we know, it makes a good film, makes a good book. Very sad what happens to the family, but, you know, it's a true story. So the next one I'm going to talk about will be the movie version of the Anna film. And then I'll talk about the sequel, which the sequel I told is based on. The Metallic fan there, but again, that's made up. In the 1982, the Anaphil, the possession, supposed to be the lad got possessed by some evil spirit, which basically you could tell was tossing in on the Exorcist at that point still. And it's sort of like, what would happen if the Anaphil meets a male version of Linda Blair? That's how I see it. That's how I see it, because none of that at all is... Mickey Mouse and the way they portrayed it never happened but again it's, it's entertainment it was a lot of film it combined with it it's a lot of film but yeah that's the Anna film and the next one I'll talk about will be 
the real one, the one in what they did in 1979. If you haven't been into that and you want to know where you get it more better, there's actually a two disc edition of the Anifil. And there's basically a biography about the Anifil. It's also better than how I tell it. You know, the only biographies of the Anifil, and at the time they reckon it was the worst his haunted house and nobody ever lived there, which is BS. There have been so many families who've left. One of the families what left, I think in 1976, not long after Deluxe's left, the only reason why they left was because there were so many kids wanting to stay the night, making out with an haunted house on Halloween night. There was being marked by the press and reporters that many times that they got so fucking pissed off. That was the reason why they left. And they even said the only haunted they had was the press would not leave them alone. There have been other families who have lived there and they've never ever tamed it being haunted. So if you ever seen a two story where it said nobody ever lived there ever again, again it's just promotion to sell the house. I believe the house now looks a lot different than how it was back in the 70s. And they've never ever been a, a child that's been haunted. Well, again, I'm not there. I want the fire on the wall. But again, it's very interesting history. It really gets mentioned today when you look at history of haunted houses, the Anifil. So yeah, the next one I'll talk about will be the Tacit 1979, the Anifil of Horror, and then probably going to the sequel. We're into them. Be smart, be safe. See you later.